Uh, all you do is you just click the new button. We're going to call this one Max IOPS. And what we're aiming for here is essentially we want to create a scenario where, or an access specification where you can achieve your maximum IOPS off the disk. And it's just something I use with Windows to kind of gauge the capable IOPS that you're going to see coming off of a hard drive or a SAN or some storage device. And I go with 4K because that's the default block size typically for Windows unless you manually go in there and set it to something else. But the default block size is a good starting point. Uh, you want to set it to 100% sequential for the purpose of this test. Again, pretty much leave the access percent of access spec at 100%. You want 100% read, so we don't want to do any writes. That's going to slow us down. We're just going for maximum IOPS here. It's kind of the dream uh, dream read result. Not practical, but it'll give you an idea of maxing out your IOPS. Okay, so we're good here. 4K, 100% access, 100% read, 100% sequential. Um, check your uh, align IOs. We've named it. We're good. All right, we're going to create another scenario. This one is called max. Um, it's it's really your maximum throughput. Uh, I just call it maximum MB for megabytes. This one is going to be more operating system specific, or storage. Um, storage device specific, storage hard drive specific. Sometimes Windows will do well with the 16K, or uh, yeah, 16K block size. Sometimes it does well with the 32K block size, even a 64. Some SANs like a 64K block size and, and on and on and so forth. So this is really kind of a number you can really uh, uh, tinker with to kind of see where your particular configuration falls and um, what you can really squeeze out of it. But for our purposes, I'm just going to go with 32K block size. And again, 100% sequential, 100% read, in my case, sector boundaries. OK. Save that one off. Now we're going to go ahead and run a couple of these just to get a feel for running multiple scenarios. Let's go ahead and run both the ones we just created. So maximum IOPS and maximum throughput there. All right, we have our SSD selected. We have our two scenarios selected. That's being executed by one worker. And again, that, that worker, to get a little bit more into specifics for the worker, it's really just an agent or a single process. So it's going to consume one core or one CPU. It's not going to be multi-threaded. Uh, as in parallel processing, that's not the case, but you can uh, kick off a parallel processing scenario by creating an additional worker and assigning the worker, the disk, all these. For each worker, you would go through these series of tabs and on, on and on and so forth. So that's kind of the thought process. It's there to simulate a real world application or scenario. And uh, we'll get into that in another lesson. Okay. Uh, and we're going to run each scenario for 20 seconds with a 10 second ramp up time. All right, and we're going to start it by hitting the green flag and look at the results. And if you notice, the uh, scenario turns green as it's running. And here's our ramp up time. And this one's max IOPS, so we'll be really watching this guy right here. And just like last time, we're running a good 19,000 IOPS, which is pretty sweet. You can do a lot with that. Uh, Runtime remaining is counting down, so it's gonna it's ramping up the second scenario. You can see there it's kicked off maximum or max MB, and it's starting now. And now you can see the IOPS dropped to 6,000 there. But instead of 74, we're pushing 190 megabytes. So if you wanted to see megabits, you'd have to multiply that out by 8. Um, 
but uh, that's pretty good too. That's not bad. It's probably because it, it should be faster. I'm running some other stuff in the background. That's why it's probably running a little bit slower. So uh, your access time, not bad for an SSD. Um, processor utilization is a little bit lower because you're not pushing so many IOPS. So those interrupts a little bit lower. It kind of gives the CPU a little bit of a breather. And um, that's essentially what your access specifications will get for you. Now, there is one thing I, I didn't touch on as much with the access specifications. There is um, kind of a, a little bit more of a squirrely scenario you can get into. You can actually, and this is a, an example of one, double click this, you can actually create multiple, I guess, s multiple access specs within that one scenario. And what essentially this is going to do this one is a 16K access, which is accessing 5% of the disk, 75% read, so on and so forth. You can see they're all kind of different. They all vary a little bit, different block sizes. All of these access spec percents have to add up to 100%. So what's essentially happening here is that I'm not sure of the algorithm if it if these are fired off randomly or if these are processed one line at a time but essentially this access spec is firing off all these different block reads and these reads and writes simultaneously under the scenario because remember we're only running one worker here so it's running one thread and firing off all these you'd get kind of a very randomized access pattern with different block accesses different reads different writes this might go to simulate a really busy file server that's that's reading large files reading small files doing some writing doing some reading it's um it's pretty divided up so you you can use that for very specific scenarios but i've never really found myself using anything like this before but it's nice to have the option i suppose so that kind of explains that one all right uh... let's see here if there's anything else i can cover i think that's pretty much it for this lesson and uh... we'll uh... we'll definitely uh... get to the uh... network targets that's an that's an interesting one uh, you can do a lot with that uh... it's a little bit more uh... tricky to set up but um, it can produce some interesting numbers you don't typically see with uh, with a network style test, and it kind of tails off the disk block access uh, testing mechanism, but for networking purposes and uses your uh, network driver, network card interface to actually process those packets and segments, and uh, gives you a similar feedback with your results display. So that's a pretty good one, but um. We'll cover that one on another lesson, and that'll uh, conclude the uh, part two for Iometer, the uh, access specification, and uh, what you can do with those guys. Thank you.